Hey everyone, a bunch of you have asked me what it's like to travel without using the Tesla supercharger network, and I haven't really been able to give you a good answer because it's not something I've ever had to do. Today, however, that's going to change. Today, my Tesla Model S is a Bolt. First, some ground rules. I'll be departing from the Antelope Valley, my destination will be in the San Jose area, and I will only stop to charge at locations that offer CCS charging. But the Tesla Model S isn't compatible with CCS, and there is no CCS adapter, so how will you charge, you ask? Well, glad you asked that, because there is a Chatamo to Tesla adapter. And thankfully, most of the CCS stations are actually combination CCS Chatamo stations. By the way, huge thanks to fellow Tesla Motors Club member and YouTuber SharkCookie.ev for loaning me this monstrosity so that I could make this video. I recommend checking out his YouTube channel, link is in the description below. Uh, he actually has a, a neat video uh, from the Lucid Air reveal that was in LA uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago, something like that. Anyway, it's really cool, go check it out. On to route planning! I've got PlugShare pulled up here, and as you can see, there's no CCS infrastructure along this section of I-5, even though it is the fastest way to get from the general LA area to the San Francisco Bay area, and it's the route that I usually take with the Tesla. But remember the rules, uh, I can only stop and charge at places where you could charge a car equipped with CCS. Uh, I'm trying to pretend to be a Bolt here. So my options are either 101 or 99. 101 would take a really long time. So we're not going to do that. Plus, it would be a really unfair comparison. So we're going to take the next quickest route, which is 99. I've already gone through and planned out and selected a couple stops. I'll be stopping first here at Delano at, um, I believe it's a Walmart. And then a uh, second stop will be up here at Chowchia, which is at a Save Mart supermarket. Uh, I could stop at Madeira, but uh, stopping up here at Chowchia just shortens up that last leg of the trip. Uh, and someone told me that it, uh, the chargers there were a little faster. I don't know. We'll see. With the way I've planned things out, each leg of the trip is between 115 and 120 miles, which is well within the capability of a comparably ranged EV like the Bolt, um, but is also something that would be possible in an EV with less range. Given that I'm taking the trip in a Tesla and I'm a dirty, dirty cheater, uh, I have sanity checked my route with tools like a better route planner. Judging from the information provided by a better route planner, this trip would even be possible using the supercharger network, assuming that I slowed down a bit uh, between Tejon Ranch and the Fresno superchargers locations. If I were taking I-5, then no slowing down would be necessary, and it would shave about an hour off the total trip time. During the trip, I plan on continuing with my cheating ways and using Tesla's built-in route planner to help me manage state of charge at my various charging stops. I consider these things cheating because I'm using tools that aren't really available to anyone that isn't a Tesla owner. I mean, there isn't an equivalent to a better route planner or EV trip planner or Tesla's built-in route planner for any other EVs yet. And so, you know, if I were to actually take this trip in a Bolt and all I had was the Bolt and plug share, I would have to manually work out, okay, well, how far can I go on the freeway with a charge? All right, where's what, what state of charge am I going to roll into the charging stop at? Um, how long am I going to have to charge to get to the next one to make sure I'll get there? I have to do all that myself. Um, but for the sake of, of practicality here, um, yeah, I'm going to cheat. The return trip will be my usual shot down I-5 with a stop at Harris Ranch and uh, Bakersfield or maybe Tahone, depending on where I feel like stopping. And according to EV Trip Planner, it'll take about five hours and 36 minutes, including charging. Realistically, it's probably gonna work out closer to six, but uh, that's, uh, details. Well, I just arrived at my first charging stop here in Delano, 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 whatever, I'm going with Delano. Uh, I arrived with about 10% less uh, charge than I had anticipated, but it was really windy coming out of the Antelope Valley, and that pretty much accounts for the difference. Uh, so yeah, let's get plugged in.
Okay, let's try this again. Success! Well, that did not go as smoothly as hoped. Um, yeah, so like 20 minutes down there, because I had to call EVgo customer support because one of their charging stations wasn't working and the other was occupied by an i3. Thankfully, the guy in the i3 came out and was about to leave and told me that that particular charger always has problems um, and they've just never resolved it uh, and that he was leaving that I could use this one. So I'm plugged in, I'm charging, I'm pulling like 111 amps at 318 volts and yeah, that's not a whole lot, but uh, it'll get the job done. As I mentioned before, I'm a dirty, dirty cheater, so I'm just going to let this charge uh, until my uh, trip energy graph here indicates that I have like a 10-15% um, buffer uh, headed to my, heading to my next charging stop. Well, I guess it's time for lunch in the back of the Model S. This is going to be a really long trip. Turns out I wasn't able to stay ahead of the rain. It's raining right now. But the good news is charging is finished. And uh, despite that, uh, that delay with the malfunctioning charger, I'm ready to get back on the road. Time for charging stop number two. So I've made it to the cute little town of Chowchia, Chowchilla? I'm gonna go with Chowchia. Uh, anyway, the chargers are working fine. I didn't have any troubles getting these going. However, I do have a bit of a bone to pick with a particular member in TMC who stated that these are 125 amp chargers because uh, they're not. They're 100 amp chargers. The result is a charging speed of about 100 rated miles replenished per hour charged. Uh, I've been here about a half hour. I'll probably need to be here for about, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes more. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to take a while to charge but it'll give me what I need to make the last leg into San Jose. I knew this would be the longest charging stop of the trip, but I've been here about an hour and 20 minutes. At the very least, the locals have been nice. Uh, I've had to restart the uh, charger three times because the EVgo chargers have that pesky 30 minute limit on them per session. Um, but uh, yeah, about ready to pack up and get on the road again. Well, after about 9 hours and 15 minutes of travel, uh, I finally reached my destination in San Jose. The car is charging, and I will set off again tomorrow to head home. But this time, I will take the supercharger network, and it will take much less time. So when I get back to the house, I'll work up how much all those EVgo sessions cost. Um, it wasn't cheap. I think maybe somewhere around uh, $46 or something like that. And anyway, they, they only bill monthly, so I'm just going to have to do the math and work it out. That's enough for tonight. Blah. Day two and the car is all charged up and ready to go home. In the interest of fairness, I have charged the car to the same state of charge that I started at yesterday, which is 100%. I don't normally need to charge to 100% um, when I'm driving from the San Jose area back down south. I usually only charge to 90%. But, you know, why put the supercharger network at a disadvantage, right? Time to hit the road.
No card swiping. Yay! I've arrived at Harris Ranch, first charging stop. And as far as charging speed goes, well, around 90 kilowatts is a lot better than yesterday. It's looking like I'll probably only be here for 20 minutes or so. Once again, the car was faster than me. I gotta get out of here. So I've made it to my second stop, which is the Bakersfield Supercharger. And apparently I've picked kind of a busy weekend to travel because uh, Harris Ranch filled up right as I was leaving. There were a couple people waiting. Uh, Bakersfield is now completely full and one of the uh, stalls is down and taped off. It's uh, not working. And I'm only charging at about 40 kilowatts right now, which uh, for a Tesla supercharger station kind of sucks. Originally, I was only going to be here for 25 minutes and then I'd have enough charge to get home. Um, but with this fairly low charging rate, um, I can be here a little longer than that. Which, I mean, you know, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It means that I'll uh, actually have time to have lunch. So there's that. This is odd because usually when I roll through the Bakersfield Supercharger, it's completely empty uh, and the charging speeds are awesome. And Harris Ranch is the one that usually sucks. This time around, they've flipped. Oh wait, what's this? It looks like I just ramped up to 75 kilowatts. So, uh, okay, I'm not gonna be here that long. It's important to appreciate the Model S's built-in park bench. Get a nice view sometimes. And just like that, it's time to go. Stop the clocks, I made it home. Well, I don't actually have any clocks, I have this very fashionable notepad, but let's go look at the data. Number time. Uh, uh, this, is, this isn't gonna work, you guys are entirely too low. You just, uh, yep, okay, there we go. Yep, yep, that works. You've gotta love these adjustable height desks. This trip was definitely a learning experience for me, so let's just get right to the takeaway here. So the trip up to San Jose, charging only at locations uh, which offered both CCS and Chatamo, took a total of 9 hours and 15 minutes. Of that, 2 hours and 42 minutes were spent stopped, 2 hours and 5 minutes of that time spent stopped was spent charging, and there was about an additional 20 minutes spent waiting uh, for that i3 to finish charging while I was on the phone with EVgo customer support because one of their chargers was down. During the trip, I initiated five charging sessions in total at $4.95 per charging session, plus 20 cents per minute spent charging, which came out to a total of about $49.75 to travel about 360 miles. Day two went significantly better. The trip down I-5 is about 330 miles. Total trip time was six hours and 15 minutes. Uh, of that, one hour and seven minutes was spent stopped. 54 minutes was spent charging at a cost of zero dollars. Now, if you have a newer Tesla where they're actually charging you to use the stations and assuming you've already used up uh, all of your annual free charging credit, it probably would have come out to like 13 bucks or somewhere around there. Either way, driving up north using the CCS Chatamo network took three hours longer than my normal trip on the supercharger network, and had I even taken the same route up 99 using the supercharger network, it probably would have only taken about seven hours instead of nine hours and 15 minutes. I guess my takeaway from this trip is that I've been entirely too charitable toward the non-Tesla DC fast charging networks. They were both miserably slow and surprisingly expensive for the disappointing experience that they offered. It would be one thing if they were expensive and great, or super cheap and, well, the way they are now, but at the moment they're miserable and expensive, so they just kind of take the worst of both worlds and cram them together. 
Keep in mind, this is very US centric and I am in California, so this should be like the ideal place to try to do long distance EV travel, right? At present, I'd say that the existing CCS Chatamo network is fundamentally incompatible with reasonable long distance travel in an EV and that in the near term, uh, any EV that's released which relies upon this network is kind of dead on arrival when it comes to long distance travel. I know that sounds harsh, but the independent EV network builders are going to have to do a lot of work to fix this. And by a lot of work, I mean like rip out every station they'd have installed across every long distance corridor they've put together and replace all of them with stations that are capable of outputting between 100 and 150 kilowatts. Because the current stations, which for the most part are only capable of outputting uh, 50 kilowatt or less on the DC side, are way too slow to be practical. There are even some CCS stations that have been installed on 101 that are only 24 kilowatt. So that's step one. Step two is that they're gonna to need to build out their network to include uh, major roadways like in California, I-5, which is the main way that people get from like Southern California to Northern California and vice versa. At present, it seems like they've taken their uh, city-centric short-range EV strategy and kind of extended it to create long-distance travel corridors. They've put a couple chargers here and there in little towns along alternate paths that have, well, more in the way of towns, uh, between Northern and Southern California, ignoring the main, the main route to get from point A to point B. And I can understand why they take this approach, because um, by putting those chargers in uh, higher population areas along less traveled routes, um, you have the potential for local charging, providing additional revenue to help pay for the network. But, I mean, make them faster. The CCS standard can support much higher charge rates even with the current 400 volt packs. That's just not what they're putting in. Step three is that they need to build their network out to provide more than one or two plugs at each charging location, and they need to actually support those locations and perform the necessary maintenance to keep them working. Anyway, I, I, I don't mean to sound all negative here, it's just that, that the experience was, uh, much worse than I was expecting. Realistically, can these problems be solved? Yes, of course they can, and they will get better with time, but it's gonna require significant investment uh, on the part of the independent EV charging network builders to actually make it happen. And at present, I'm wondering how successful these companies will be in transitioning their business models from city-centric short-range charging models to long-range travel corridor models uh, while we're waiting for the major manufacturers to ramp up EV production. You have to acknowledge that the network builders Builders definitely have themselves stuck in a chicken or egg situation where the lack of adequate long-range network is going to impact the sales of other manufacturers long-range EVs and at the same time that impact on the sales of other manufacturers long-range EVs is going to impact the network builders ability to roll out network that would in turn increase the sales of long-range EVs that aren't Tesla's. Tesla, on the other hand, already took the first step in solving this problem for themselves, put up the money, and built the network. With the Model 3 in the horizon, one really has to ask if Tesla sells a bunch of those cars and hugely expands their network to support those cars, um, what's going to happen to the independent network builders, and in turn, the chances of large auto manufacturers' success in the EV market. At the end of the day, we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens, um, but at this point, I am, um, I am less optimistic, which I don't like that. Anyway, let me know what you think. Leave your questions and comments down below. There's a lot to be discussed about this particular topic. Uh, also, don't forget to rate and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Hey, David, I gave you a plug for loaning me a plug, eh?